Welcome back, beloved sister, to part three of our sharing of the myth, She Who Holds the Treasure. The Forgetting Times The hush of the wind and the ocean grew long. The waves crashed wild and yet dim. Men with torches came to our temples, our homes, our holy gathering places, and turned our power against us, so that it was seen as ugly, vicious. A vile and vicious story began to take root like a living cancer in our hearts. It told of the evil of women, the scorned and reviled feminine, the dangerous ones the ones of sin of the flesh, the ones who drew us into deep and dark seduction and manipulation that was said to be the core of who we are as women. No longer remembered as her vessels, healing with love, we were judged and punished as sinful, dirty and evil. Some men quietly tried to sway us to forget, holding their hands over our mouths. Shh, they'd say. Shh, don't speak, they'd say. Shh, let us fix you, make you whole. Mend your ways, they'd say. Repent your ways. Come to the light that we hold as truth. The one light, the one God. Forget your ways. The requirement of us, stop playing songs to the stars, stop singing to her, forget the honeyed elixir of healing touch that surges through our bodies, close our eyes and end the seeing. Forsake our divine cosmic galactic nature, sink sister into the mud. We ached with the torment of this disease. We cried for our essence. We cried for the future of our divinity and our humanity. The moon wept for us. Daughters, daughters of the moon, look to your stars. See your velvet night sky. For I am your light, your ever-present light. I am you. You are me. Oh, daughters of the moon, remember. We knew what to do, for we had done it before and we would do it again in a heartbeat, across all time and space, across all countries and lands. Those of us with temples gathered one last time, sneaking out into the darkest of nights. Those of us without temples felt the call resonating through mother's beats. Whether in person or within our own hearts, we lit the candles we swept the floors. We placed the flowers in our long hair once more. Softly, so softly, we sang to one another an agreement. It was our time to light the flames of our inner heart temples and put our gifts quietly to rest out of the known, the seen, and into the depths of our divinely human bodies. The old, battered story says that they took away our power. The old, torn story says that they won. But that's not the real story. Listen, beloved. Listen closely. Do you remember? We lovingly, tenderly, carefully placed each gift, each mystery, each healing practice of love deep into our bones, our wombs, our cells, where they could not find them and could not take them away. For they could never be taken away. They can never be taken away. It was by choice. It was by choice. It was by choice to be silent in the winter. It was our choice we knew what had to be done. Oh, my beautiful, beloved sisters, do not mourn. Throughout time when our lands have felt dreary and heavily cold, we've continued this practice of placing our gifts deep inside us, shielding our temples from being burned. 
Great Mother warms us within our cosmic wombs, the place where we hold celebrations, the place where we orgasmically create, the place where we release each moon's egg. We, we sisters are the holders of the creative, destructive life as they are one. We, we are the keepers of the flame, a light within the temples of our hearts. Grandmother upon grandmother, mother upon mother, daughter upon daughter, our stories spread and grew. With each generation, our temples absorbed deeper and deeper into our bones. The quieter our foremothers became, the less we remembered. The gifts and the treasures were hidden so deep, and yet they were always there. Without our circles, we began to believe the stories that had been told, that our power was struck from us, that we were not worthy, that we were less than. There was something wrong with us. This birthed an epidemic within us, one that left us feeling the shame of somehow not being enough and of the deep-seated fear of somehow being too much. We were shackled to a story that denied us the truth of our essence. So dark were the times that it was not safe for us to be seen. Our heart lights slowly dimmed, for having it shine brightly could mean destruction. And this has been the case for so many of us. The mud lining grew thick in our wombs, and we grew blind to the light. We began to forget that we carry the stars in our palms and diamond temples in our hearts. We toiled and worked. Once together as priestess sisters, we silently now passed looks that between us spoke of our fogged memories. We felt alone, separated, fearful. We vied for the attention of the men, securing our safety by becoming their property through marriage, saving ourselves from certain annihilation. We became the chattel of our brothers and fathers and uncles. We looked at our sisters to compare who was now the most beautiful and who would secure the best marriage. We began to see one another as the stealth enemy and set about on a secret and terrifying war with one another. A secret, backstabbing, cold, hidden war. Men Men, too, forgot the sun-rayed golden light that emanates from them. Their kingdom became one of deceit. They swallowed sharpened edged power to grow strong, and this power took the shape of daggers and bombs and rifles and batons and hardened tears that became bullets. The magical wand of man shifted to a searing weapon of command. With it, he stood over others. With it, he proclaimed his identity, his worth, the steel shield of his strength, invulnerable, impenetrable, almighty. War, hate, destruction of his remembrance that he is to be a penetrating light force of loving action, all was forgotten. The veil was so dense, it was the forgetting times. The veil was so dense, it was the forgetting times. And in the amnesia of forgetfulness, we sank deeper and deeper into silence, into the hatred, into the loathing. And there we stayed for a long time.